Brianna Aldridge joined by Patrick Walker from Cowboys.com to talk about what's going on with this Cowboys team as of late. And we'll start with some positivity. I will say I think you need that when the record is what it's recording right now. Mm. Uh, Chuma Idoga, who was the starting left tackle for this team in the preseason, who obviously has been injured sus, is back at practice. So let's just talk about what that means for this left tackle competition now. Yeah, well, Chumi Doga, obviously, he went out in training camp with the toe injury that put him on IR, and that's basically what got Tyler Guyton, the rookie first-round pick, the move at, at starting left tackle. Tyler Guyton has struggled both in his play and his availability. We saw Austin Richards, former fifth-round pick, come in and did some good things against the Philadelphia Eagles. And now Chuma Idoga, 21-day practice window has now opened. It'll be interesting to see if Guyton can hold those guys off as far as his availability is concerned. If not, Austin Richards, again, he showed some things. And Chuma Idoga, who's going to have to work some rust out. But nonetheless, there's some questions to be answered on that left tackle position. And just talking about the entire offensive line, uh, we got a chance to see Tyler Smith out there today who looked like one of his legs was kind of wrapped up pretty good um, working off to the side. That's not what you want to see when like this offensive line has been banged up throughout the entire season. Yeah, so I guess we're going from the positive to the real quick. Oh, OK, OK, <laughs> real quick. Um, Foul that under things you don't like to see. Tyler Smith, like you said, he's out there with a uh, wrap on his knee. He's doing rehab work with Britt Brown, one of the lead trainers. Uh, and you just have to wonder now, we talk about question marks at left tackle. How does that shake out with availability and injuries, return from injuries, guy currently battling the injury in Tyler Guyton? Move over one spot, Tyler Smith. Now he's less than 100%. You're also seeing Zach Martin. He's less than 100%. What does this mean for a Cowboys offensive line that's already consistently struggling to provide that, those blocks for now Cooper Rush, it's going to be tenuous going forward. So keep an eye on Tyler Smith, see if he can play, practice this week and or how that affects his availability against the Texans. And like you said, Cooper Rush, obviously he's the man under center. That was announced. He, we're not going away. That was a really, was it 45 yards? Uh, 46. 46. I'm not going to let you take that yard away from Cooper Rush. My bad, Cooper. He earned that 46. <laughs> yes, 46 yards for Cooper Rush. Now, the, the theme of last week is that there was belief, right? This, this is a quarterback who is 5-1 uh, and one for this team, and there's a lot of belief behind Cooper Rush. Now, in your opinion, what you saw, what we all saw was pretty ugly, but was that just a bad game? Is this a quarterback that's still capable, or is this just not really – does it all start with the O-line, and that's why Cooper Rush is kind of fighting for his life with those 46 yards? Uh, it, it starts with the offensive line, first and foremost, and that's what caused the aberration. And I, I do say it's an aberration for Cooper Rush. He was 5-1 and one going into that game. He's showing you he can play at a high level. He's not going to lose you many games but the problem is he may not win you as many games as well you're going to have to tie Cooper Rush to a stout offensive line and a defense that's taking the ball away consistently those are the two things that helped him uh, succeed in 2022 when Dak Prescott was on injured reserve um, but when you look at the situation now offensive lines a bit shaky defense did come up big for you in the first half against the Eagles got the takeaways but then when it came time to drop back the fumbled snap notwithstanding he did not get a lot of time back there because of those offensive line protection so this just may be a poor situation for Cooper Rush to come into, so that's going to make him struggle. And that, for my money, is why you should unleash a little bit more of Trey Lance. Keep the defense off balance. Use his mobility to escape that pressure that's inevitably going to come. And Cooper Rush obviously did not have a great game, and they brought in Trey Lance kind of when things were already ugly and mm -hmm. late in that third quarter. Um, do you think that Trey Lance at some point will get a, like a shot from the beginning, or you think they're just going to have him hidden because – Cooper Rush is what they want to roll with. You know, uh, it's the holiday season, so I'm going to ask Mike McCarthy to give me a gift. Uh, my gift would be to see Trey Lance unleashed for full, four full quarters. And again, this is not a knock to Cooper Rush. I think that he's one of the more capable backups in the league, but the situation does not fit him right now. It needs someone who can escape the pressure, who can keep guys off balance, linebackers and whatnot. So for me, it's Trey Lance. Maybe even sprinkle some Will Greer in there now that he's been re-added to the practice squad. Two mobile quarterbacks that can maybe get you something on the ground and let's talk about a little bit of those offensive weapons uh, you asked the question earlier today about where Brandon Cooks was so just what was Mike McCarthy's feeling of Cooks coming back and then good old Mingo his possible <laughs> debut in these next couple weeks yeah Jonathan Mingo still being wrapped up so we'll see if he makes his uh, Cowboys debut against the Houston Texans on Monday night Brandon Cooks Mike McCarthy said that he's making progress he's looking good I spoke with Brandon Cooks a couple times over these past couple of weeks he sounds like he's ready to go raring to go um, but we'll just have to wait until he gets cleared 
and it'll be interesting to see opposite CD Lamb how the Cowboys factor in Mango and Brandon Cooks when they're both on the field because they've not got as much from Jalen Tobert as they like, haven't got much from Jalen Brooks or Kevontae Turpin, so they really need that definitive wide receiver two and wide receiver three at this point. Now, last question for you, looking ahead to the Houston Texans with this young QB who's have a little bit shaky, but I don't think – no offense to the mm. Cowboys. I don't think anyone is – is, did I do it? You okay. It. I'll knock on something when we finish. <laughs> but what are you what – is, what is the key to, you know, containing this Houston Texans with this banged up, no matter what side of the ball you look at, this offense? Just, mm -hmm. It's just so many things, right? It is. But what – how does the Cowboys – how do the Cowboys just have – give themselves a chance in this game? The Cowboys have one shot at this. Um, the, the Texans defense, they're animalistic with Will Anderson and those guys back there. It's going to have to be attacking C.J. Stroud. This is an offensive line. You talk about the Cowboys struggling to provide pressure. The Texans offensive line, they're doing the same. C.J. Stroud, he's been sacked 34 times, and it's 17 times from the interior, 17 times on the edge, which means you can get at him from any of those spots. Problem is, is C.J. Stroud excels at throwing under pressure. So you're going to have to contain him on the ground. He's run for 10 first downs, and he's moving the chains. Keep him in the pocket so that the pressure, when you get it that you can get home on him to keep him from getting the ball downfield to guys like Nico Collins and those other targets. Stephon Diggs is not on the field, but if you allow him to flush out left or right, it won't matter. Well, it's going to be another tough test this one on Monday night primetime and the Cowboys still looking for that first win at home this season. That's it for now for Brian Aldridge for Patrick Walker.